Another tool in your market, marketing communications toolbox is personal selling. And personal selling generally refers to two-way communication where two people are talking to each other. It's usually face-to-face, -face, although there are many new technologies emerging with the internet and chat rooms where you can visit a website and chat with a sales representative. Usually those are more inside customer service sales representatives than they are um, more traditional face-to-face -face personal selling. Uh, personal selling is very effective expensive because it's one person talking to one person, but it also provides immediate feedback. You can see immediately what the customer's response is to your presentation. and You can tweak your presentation based upon that. Generally, personal selling involves a process of prospecting. In other words, finding people within your target audience that you can then approach and you have to decide how you want to approach them in a creative way that will generate interest and meet their needs. And when you approach them, what you have to first do is to find out their needs and show, um, identify their needs for which your product can provide a solution that you can address when you present your product and address any resistance to your product. You would then close your sales presentation by asking them to buy and provide any necessary follow-up so that you make sure that the product you have delivered to that customer meets their needs and they have a satisfactory response to generate repeat business. So it's very important to know the benefits of your product from the customer's perspective because personal selling is all about helping customers uh, to see how your product can meet their needs versus trying to get them to buy your product. Another tool in your integrated marketing communications tool toolbox besides advertising and two-way communication through personal selling is what we would call sales promotion. When we use those two terms together, sales promotion, it refers to some special inducement or value added uh, item to get people to want to buy your product now. And sometimes you might notify them of this special incentive or inducement through personal selling or through advertising. So some examples of sales promotions or are contests which are based upon skill or sweepstakes which are based upon chance or games where people will participate with your brand to generate additional interest. There are also frequent user or loyalty programs where people who buy get um, incentives or rewards for their frequency of their use or visiting or purchasing your particular brand. Coupons and rebates, free samples, um, obviously free samples allow pe uh, pro people to get to try your product and this is especially important in the introduction phase of the product life cycle. Premiums, Sometimes you might give away a free uh, product or sample or a related product with the purchase of another product. So for example, you might get a sample of conditioner on uh, a shampoo purchase or you might get a free cup when you buy a particular shake at McDonald's. Point of purchase displays, you might see these uh, as you go through retail outlets. Special displays, sometimes cardboard or set up within the aisles uh, to promote particular products. Uh, product placement, here you might see particular brands placed in television shows or movies. Um, 
being used by people who are very similar to the target market. And again, this gets your product additional exposure. Um, so sales promotion is another tool in addition to personal selling and advertising in your marketing communication toolbox. Another form of marketing communication is public relations. And we might define that as simply as managing the reputation of your brand or your um, organization. The Public Relations Society of America defines uh, public relations as a, ma a management function that evaluates public attitudes and then identifies the policies and procedures of an organization with public interests and then plans and ex executes programs of action to earn public acceptance of that brand or organization. So some common PR tools might be news releases or press conferences to obtain publicity, uh, coverage about or communication about your product or service in the media for which you do not directly pay, creating annual reports, having special events, all those sorts of things create good, generally good publicity or public relations for your program. Another rapidly growing method of marketing communications is social media marketing. You may have seen information about brands or companies or organizations on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, um, content that might be generated by the user or the consumer. We would call this organic content. And it's probably positive user-generated content about your brand is probably one of the most valuable forms of marketing communications because it's like word of mouth, only it's accessible to many more people at one time. So we might call it world of mouth. In some cases, marketers are generating content through social media uh, for their brand. And in fact, sometimes much of the user generated content isn't truly organic, but it is prompted by marketers. When you get an email after you've purchased a brand asking you to do a review of that particular brand, that is marketer uh, influenced or generated content um, by a particular user. When you're asked to send a picture of your using a particular brand to compete against a contest, that's not totally organic content, but marketers are driving that organic content. The interesting thing about social media marketing that social media has really given customers a very strong uh, voice in research, in product development, in promotion, and that's a common term that's being used in marketing now through social media promotion, and that is the voice of customer. Social media now uh, gives customers a very strong voice um, in basically broadcast types of media about particular brands where those voices of customers used to be relatively controlled and most electronic communication to customers came from marketers. So because of this voice of customer, uh, social media marketing is sometimes referred to as the fifth P of marketing. We've talked about product, price, place, which we refer to as supply chain management, and promotion, which we refer to as integrated marketing communications. But then the fifth P of marketing is getting customers to participate in your brand, largely through social media marketing. And some ways they might participate would be through blogging and microblogging. 
Twitter is really a microblog. It's the headline many times for uh, attachments to other items that uh, might include additional information. Video blogs called vlogs and video sharing on YouTube and other devices. I mean, if people share themselves using your brand in a positive way, you can see how this can really create some positive marketing communication for your particular brand. But keep in mind that social media marketing, user-generated content, can also be very negative about your brand. And that's why many marketers are monitoring um, social media activity about their brand so that they can follow up on any concerns or customer com complaints and resolve those before they go viral, so to speak. Uh, networking through things like LinkedIn or other medium. Um, social networking, like on Facebook, Pinterest, Google+, Foursquare, um, product reviews. All those are just some aspects of social media marketing. There are entire classes and specializations on social media marketing. So let's talk and, and maybe review here uh, something that we talked on about early on. We said that if a customer or a potential person in your target market doesn't know about your product, they can't buy it. And we reviewed the consumer decision-making process where we talked about one stage being the information search. And we looked at three stages of external information search and we define these three sources as either public, personal, or marketed controlled. And so I would ask you, advertising, personal selling, and sales promotion tend to be what source of external information? A public source, a personal source, or a marketer controlled source? Probably a marketer controlled source. When we look at public relations and publicity efforts, the results of public relations and publicity tend to be what? Through public sources, personal sources, or marketer controlled sources. And generally those would be public sources. You might see it on the news or in the newspaper or an editorial. And what about social media? What would that be? A personal source, a marketer controlled source, a public source, probably a personal source. There might be some marketer influence and there might be some marketer controlled uh, posts that those would be those marketer generated content on social media. But whenever it's organic or user generated content, that would be more of a personal source of information, could even be a public source if a public source of information is sharing information about your particular brand. When it comes time for you to make sure people are aware of your product, you have uh, several items in your marketing communications or promotions mix. Advertising, sales promotion, public relations, personal selling, and social media. And so your decision is to decide which and how you will mix these elements together to get the most bang for your promotional buck.